Hello, my name is Sive. This is my channel, Stories and Sive. I talk about books. Welcome to the last week vlogging for Romathon. Romathon is a points based, teams based readathon going on all throughout the month of March that I was participating in. By the time you see this video, it will be closed and I had an absolute blast. I gave a vlog dedicated to each week of the month as well as a separate vlog for um, the 48 hour readathon called Peace Talks. A few of them will be linked in the description. Okay, so honest reading check-in time. I did not vlog yesterday on Monday because I was not in the mood to read. I didn't have anything really for you. I'm currently reading two things, Lachlan's by Robert Jackson Bennett and The Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. Both of these books are wonderful. I have just been sprint reading throughout this month for too long and I'm starting to feel the reading fatigue, if you will. So I'm gonna try and just take this week really slow and just read what I can. I did start The Tempest of Tea yesterday and it was like really good. It's this tea room run by this young woman and in their world there's vampires but it's like meant to be this vampiric Peaky Blinders style book and it's just is coded for me so I'm like almost tentative to listen to that because if I'm not in the mood to read and I read something no matter how much I could have loved it in another setting I'm worried I won't and then I won't do the book justice. Anyways, that's where I'm at. Just quick check-in and I'm going to start my work today. I'll keep you posted on everything I read this week. I do not know what to tell you. I, it's <laughs> Thursday morning. I have not vlogged basically at all. Here's the deal. I'm in a reading slump. Nothing I'm picking up is appealing and I don't want to hate read books I know I'm going to like in a different situation. So like I was reading The Tempest of Tea, I'm about a quarter of the way through that and I am just slogging through it. And I know that it's because of my reading slump and not because it's a bad book. And Lachlan's is not going great. It is a wonderful book, but it's a really heavy, dense fantasy. And I only really have time to read in the evenings during my work week. My weekend this weekend will free me up a little bit, which is great, but I just need more energy and focus in order to read a book like that so I've read maybe 10 pages this week. Anyways I was thinking I was in the mood for a romance and just like a popcorn romance read to try and like keep me reading so I picked up Devious Game. It's a free bonus like ad on Hoopla and I know nothing about it so I'm really enjoying it. I'm halfway through it. It's like a dark like contemporary billionaire romance so we'll see how that goes. It's my first time reading one of those. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Today is a rough day. I have a four day work week and it's Thursday, which means, you know, this is basically my Friday and they're, she's really making me work for it, okay? <laughs> reading updates, let's go. Dangerous Games, Devious Game. Finished that, it was good. It was a dark romance. It was the first like real dark romance that I've read. Very toxic relationship, look up trigger warnings. It was pretty, it was pretty bad. Um, I read it and I liked it. I liked it because I think I was really like desperate for something like really different and it kept me reading. So I'm really glad that I finished that. It was a shorter book. It was like 222 pages and then the audiobook was only like four hours or something. Then when I finished that, I just went on Libby to look around and um, my hold for Bride by Ali Hazelwood, my audiobook had come through. So that's what I moved into. I'm reading that right now. I'm really liking it a lot. And this is exactly what I need. So turns out when I'm in like a reading slump, I just need to read a romance or a dark romance. You learn new things. I'm actually at the library right now because I'm really, I'm just gonna deviate from my <laughs> physical TBR. This does mean I might not hit my goal of trying to finish it in three months. We're really coming up, you know, three months is almost done. April 18th was this deadline that I set for myself and I'm just like not really feeling any of the physical reads and it's actually putting me in a reading slump. So I'm here at the library. I can't buy any books, but I think I'm going to see if I can find any fun like romances that I can bring into my weekend with me just to try and get a few more points for the end of Romathon and then of course avoid a reading slump. I'll let you know what I get. Guys, I've been kidnapped by the romance genre. I'm obsessed 
with pride. <laughs> so I don't know what you want from me. I don't because I have nothing to give other than my love. I have no criticism to give this book, okay? Paranormal romance, vampires, werewolves, forced proximity, forced marriage, a bit of politics at the front end to get the reader acquainted with how seriously enemies these two species are. This is not just like enemies to lovers, like, ooh, they hate each other. No, these two main characters, their peoples have been slaughtering and murdering each other for centuries. And that's enemies. I'm obsessed, I, <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. I did go to the library, like I showed you, I picked up two books. One is called The Sizzle Paradox, which is about, it gave me like The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. It's academia and it is a person who is trying to complete their thesis and they're like doing their study on like romantic relationships and sexual chemistry. Thought this looked fun, quite short. The Duke Undone by Joanna Lowell, 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 a book that I've seen at the library a few times. I just like always loved the cover. I think it's so cute. And so she's an artist and basically she finds our main love interest one evening after a night of drinking, um, drunk, naked, <laughs> lying in the street. He's fine, but she decides that she wants to like sketch him. It ends up in an exhibit and this man walks into her exhibit and is like, that's me. <laughs> like for some reason that just sounds so funny to me. It's um, historical Victorian, whatever. So neither of these have buildings on the cover, nor are they black, nor do they take place in the school. I could also pick up a ebook from the library. There's a few romance ones that I was looking at today that have the fake dating trope that I would be interested in. Again, none of them are black covers, but I do need to double check whether any of them have buildings on the cover. I don't quite remember. So I'm going to probably read a romance book tonight, whether that's Continuing Bride or starting a new book. I don't know. I am abandoning my physical TBR for the moment. I'm not necessarily abandoning my physical TBR goal, but I am going to make it much harder for myself to complete. Just an age rabbit. I am gonna make myself a mojito. It is Friday and I have off work today. So why, you may ask, am I up and about at 9 a.m. in the morning? Um, I have a few errands that I need to run. I actually, I'm sitting in the parking lot at my bank and then I have a massage later. So I brought my Kindle to read in between some of these errands. Guys, I started a book last night called The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead. I was looking at ebooks that I could just like borrow that were available right now th through Libby through my library. And I picked this one because it was contemporary, but it had my favorite trope, which is fake dating. And it is in fact about our two main characters, um, Logan and, oh, what is the main gal's name? Anyways, on the anniversary of her ex-boyfriend cheating on her, she decides that she wants to do a one night stand. She's a creature of habit. She loves her schedule. She would be maybe what you would call boring. And so she wants to have this one night that's like an alter ego night. So she goes out to a hotel bar and meets Logan. I'm not gonna tell you exactly how this goes down because it's half the fun, but essentially he is a political presence, political candidate for governor and um, some photos pop up and they're doing damage control. So these two end up fake dating for the public eye to basically convince everyone that this man can be committed to the state of Texas and to a woman. <laughs> Listen, it was, it's actually been really funny. Like there's a few times that I was like giggling, just the situations that they've gotten themselves into. I read 27% last night and woke up and read a few more chapters this morning before I left. Basically, I'm having a grand old time. The writing is really good and these characters are really lovely. So I'm gonna find a spot before my massage to sit and read for a bit. See ya. I found a park to sit at. I still have about half hour. So I'm just sitting here reading The Boyfriend Candidate and I appreciate a rom-com that's self-aware. So they're doing the pretty woman trope where the mousy 
girlfriend gets a makeover and they've got like this budget from the democratic committee for grooming and apparently he doesn't use all of it. Ashley when said late like called this chapter being pretty womaned or whatever. I just think it's funny. I feel like this book has like some really beautiful real connections and is very intentional with some things and then isn't afraid to you know kind of poke fun at itself in the same breath. I don't know. I like it. Saturday morning. Um, it's a little bit later in the morning. We actually went to our friend's house to help them move. So I look a little rough, but I have the rest of the afternoon to do chores and read. So I will keep you posted on what I read. I did quite a bit of reading yesterday of The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead, and I'm still really enjoying that. And then I did listen to some of Bride. I'm about the halfway point of that book and I am 80, 85% of the way through the boyfriend candidate, so I fully expect to finish that today. Okay, happy Sunday, happy Easter, and welcome to the last day of March and the last day of Ramadan. I cannot believe that we have been reading together for a month and that I have successfully followed through with vlogging an entire month. That's pretty crazy. We've had a lot of highs and lows throughout the month, and I will give a little bit of like an overview wrap up, but as far as currently reading goes, I told you yesterday, I think that I finished Bride and I was reading The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead. I finished that book last night and I really, really enjoyed it. I like want to say it's a four star romance. The cool thing is Ashley Winstead is actually better known for her two thrillers in My Dreams I Hold a Knife and um, The Last Housewife. I would love to try those books. I feel like I enjoy her writing and maybe I should check them out. Last night I decided that I wanted to keep my mood reading Kindle binge that's been going on moving. Yeah, so I went on Libby and was browsing through some available, like readily available Kindles Kindle books and I picked Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter, which is a romance author I've seen all over, you know, booktube, but have never tried before. And it is, it's really good so far. I ended up reading a quarter of it last night and I've been reading a little bit today. I'm closing in on the halfway point. So really briefly, that book is about our main character, Olivia, and she gets a text from a unknown number with a like sexual text. She responds, hey man, you've got the wrong number and they have a little banter back and forth and they continue texting. If you wanna know more about the synopsis, you can read it yourself, but let me just tell you, it's an absolute blast. It's really funny. Our main character, Olivia, is very wear her heart on her sleeve, say what she feels, no filter, which is not someone I can relate to but someone who I love reading from. And it just means her banter with our love interest, whose name is Colin. That means their banter is just peak. It's, it's really good. I've got dinner with my parents tonight and we'll wrap up for you all of the books that I read this week, but we'll get into that later. I still have some more reading to do. Okay, hello and welcome to the end of the last vlog of Ramadan. I have put off filming this outro for longer than I'd like to admit. After March ended, my life got very, very busy and like sitting down in front of the camera and thinking cognitively about like the books I finished and how to wrap up these vlogs. It just wasn't really something that I felt like I had the energy or like the headspace to do. But I'm here to do that now. So let me tell you, I finished Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. I've actually gone on to, in this month of April now, um, read a good few romances. So I don't know like why, but I'll do anything to avoid a reading slump. And now I'm in my romance era. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I really enjoyed Mr. Wrong Number and I ended up reading actually the sequel 
a few days later and I'm really enjoying, can highly recommend that contemporary romance. It was really goofy, really funny, actually had the comedy version of rom-com. Some books are like, I'm rom-com and it's romantic, but it's not actually that funny. So this book definitely did that, would highly recommend. I gave Bride by Allie Hazelwood five stars. And then I went and gave The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead four stars and Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Pinter also four stars. So at the end of the day, like this was actually one of my stronger reading weeks, not necessarily in quantity, but for quality, absolutely. The only five star I gave out the entire month of March. Yeah. So that is it for the video and for the vlogs of Ramathon. We ended up winning. Go Team Shadows and I had a blast. I hope that you guys enjoyed these videos and I can't believe I actually like was consistent and kept up with like vlogging pretty much like every day of the entire month of March. That's pretty insane that I did that. So yeah, I had a blast. We'll definitely be participating next year. Cassidy is already dropping hints about what the theme is gonna be next year. So my month of March in 2025 is definitely blocked off for Realmathon. If you like other bookish videos like this, feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you. And other than that, have a great rest of your day. I will see you in the next one. Bye.